my fault completely completely my fault uh, a little bit of a, I thought it was I was just been talking basically for the last three minutes I've been chatting to chatting to the camera and it's not been turned on so um, <laughs> so it's, it's on now <sighs> Ooh, right so um, <clears throat> no news from uh, from any of the dive spots uh, so it looks like another week of, of dry training which is absolutely fine we can um, we can do that um, last night I went through the 10 aspects of free diving and gave you a really nice um, I don't know if it's really nice but a, a, an overview of the, the 10 aspects of uh, free diving you should be looking at training and broke them down uh, and went late to the clap as as is my um uh yeah my, my regular thursday night issue um but there you go so tonight i promised i'll go through the 10 points of learning now this is genuinely the most important thing you can uh pull together if you're learning anything Okay, so uh, it was based. Um, I kind of got the got the idea together based on um, my uh, post grad in learning psychology and uh, the book Bounce um, and uh, a little bit of Tony Buzan, how the mind uh, works, le le you know, learning psychology, and put together these ten words which are key to learning anything so let's uh let's go without further uh, without further ado let's go straight in there okay so these 10 words now these are essential for you to learn anything you've got to recognize them um and then you could start using them so the same with everything you've got to um acknowledge them and then you can um you know, can be aware of them um, and then you can adapt okay so um, awareness, acknowledgement, adaption, and this is with everything. So, all of these ten uh, points are linked to each other. Now, when I first did the first uh, week, I held up a card with all these, and we drew arrows on them, etc., etc. And and it was completely random as to which order we went them in, uh, went through. They are all linked to one another. Okay, so I've put them up here in no particular order at all. I'm going to go through and explain them, um, but uh, there's no order, and you should be able to see the uh, link between uh, all of them. Okay? And this is, yeah, the, the key to learning anything. So, uh, top, uh, we've got failure, and I say this is no particular order. I literally just wrote them out, the 10 points. Uh, so, failure. If you can't fail at uh, a challenge or a, an objective or a, a, an exercise, if you can't fail, then you're not progressing. All right? If if you can't, there has to be some sort of failure, and you've got to fail. Right? You, on average, you should be failing uh, maybe uh, four out of five times. And the example I always give is skateboarding. You see uh, kids, you see a video of kids doing these amazing tricks. Um, they have failed thousands of times, thousands of times to do that trick. But they don't count it as failure. Uh, somebody goes out on their skateboard, they pick up a board, see you later, I'm going out now, I'm going to skate. And they go out for an hour and they try a trick, they try a trick, they try a trick, they you know, kind of fall off, they fail the trick a thousand times in one night a thousand failures but they will land a few things uh, and, and roll away and just be happy with them come back how was the skating session oh it's brilliant i landed this and this and this they never ever 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 go how's the skating session oh rubbish i failed a thousand times no they did something four times five times and in fact, I'm learning a new trick, my lockdown trick on a, on a skateboard. I'm learning it at the moment. And I was tallying up. Uh, I've said, right, during lockdown, I'm going to learn this trick. And I was working out how many times I'd attempted the trick. And it is, I'm coming up to um, maybe uh, 600 attempts at this trick. And 
Uh, I nearly got it last night. But every time I'm analyzing the failure, and this is the important thing, I'm analyzing it. Why didn't it work? Okay, this, I can change this, I can change this. And, and I'm adding a success into every failure. I'm thinking, oh, my foot was in a better place. This was tweaked, this is tweaked. Okay, so from a failure, you can learn. So if you just do something, you can't learn anything. Okay, because you know it worked. And this goes back to when I'm talking, uh, when, when people go uh, on with seminars with uh, professionals or high level world champions, whether it's free diving, whether it's darts, whatever, they're of limited use because you're only hearing what worked for them. You're not uh, you know they'll only tell you their path they so if they could coaches they'll tell you other paths as well but um you know they tried lots of other paths and they just tell you the one that worked and that's not what's interesting and what's interesting is what failed so when we're talking about free diving uh, all the games we play uh, in our no tank sessions you can fail on every single one and that's the point okay set your set your uh, objectives with failure in mind Number on the second one, and it's not number two, it's just the second one on the list, list is challenge. And that's it. Uh, the, the challenge is you want to set something that's a little bit further away from what you can do. So, um, uh, we were talking about breath holds uh, the other night. Um, there's, um, you want to set something that's just next time I can get that. Something that's just just outside your your reach and then you're striving for it and that's the challenge but you will fail okay you challenge yourself to do uh, a little bit more uh, you're challenging yourself to do something a little bit better and you will fail and you will fail but when you do it you're already thinking about the next challenge so you're always striving that little bit of extra okay? and a failure is where you learn so it's a success. So you've got to turn it around that way. Oh yeah, that, that didn't work, that didn't work, but I was getting a bit closer. Next time I'm gonna have that. Next time I'm gonna have it. So that's the challenge. And moving down, uh, you've got ego. Okay. So <sighs> ego is super powerful in uh, learning, but equally well it can be a, a, a final finishing topic you've got to be aware of your ego and so bring it back to no tanks bring it back to our exercises our games we put these games in where you want to beat somebody else but they may be doing it in a completely different way from you they may have no fins on they may uh, be doing it backwards they might be doing it half lung you want to beat them so there's that's feeding our ego to challenge i really want to beat them but within no tanks we are all aware that actual true ego isn't involved because yeah i, I beat owen i beat owen like in that game i beat him yeah but owen was doing it no fins owen was doing it half lung so it, it, it's it's there's no ego really there it's a it's a, it's a fun made up ego all right and obviously owen's like and i didn't I, I lost that i don't wanna but he he doesn't think you know when people don't console him say oh it's okay owen you know like you're doing it no fins no that's not the point you'll say yeah man you lost oh man next time i can do it okay Be the fact that you know he was making it harder is, is relevant it's it's that challenge to beat each other the, the the friendly ego when you step back it's uh you know not not true ego okay? because we're all you know friends okay. okay so motivation so you have to be uh really in fact honesty and motivation i'm going to do them together so you've got to be honest about your motivations uh, your motivations have got to be you. You can never excel in something if it's, if you're being told to do it. Okay, so you've got to have your own motivations and you've got to be honest about it. Uh, because if you're not honest about it, uh, it will fall apart. It will 
fall apart. So um, this is this is why numbers are very uh, uh, counterproductive, but very difficult to get rid of. Yeah, I want to. I want to do thirty. I want to do thirty meters. I want to do a thirty meter dive. Mm. That's your motivation. Well, what do you do? What what happens when you get to thirty meters? Well, uh, I want to do thirty-five. Why? What's the, what's the difference? Who cares if it's thirty, thirty-five, thirty-seven, thirty-nine? Who cares? Doesn't it, they're, like, they're just numbers. Turn it into feet, and it doesn't make any sense. All right. So your motivation isn't the numbers. It, it can't be, because I did thirty meters. Who cares? Yeah. Anybody outside freediving doesn't even know what thirty meters depth looks like, and they're not going to be impressed people inside freediving go oh yeah 30 meters that's just a number yeah why are you diving why do you want these depths okay because i want to beat him because i want to beat him that's honest that's an honest motivation but it's also ego so it's it's all going to fall apart because what happens if oh, i'm going to beat that man i'm going to beat that guy i'm going to beat that bike and then and then that guy quit, quits and goes off and uh, you know does a different sport oh Okay. Yeah. Um, so you've got to be honest about it. You've got to find your motivation, uh, and having a, a, an ego involved in that is is not is not cool. It's it's not useful. It's not helpful. Okay. But you've got to be honest about it. And so the honesty comes in we're doing these we're doing lengths and it's really tough sometimes you're, you're doing a standard warm-up and you don't make the length you've got to come up early and you've got to hold your hand up and say i didn't do that and sometimes it's really tough you've got 25 people in the pool um and and it's tough for me because I'm, I'm i'm an instructor i'm there and I, I can't make a length oh man that's embarrassing well it's not embarrassing i've got to be honest i can't make length tonight. nobody else cares nobody cares whether i'm doing a length or not no got to be honest about it otherwise you end up going yeah well i could have done a length but uh you know i was uh watching uh watching that and uh, doing this and uh, no no that's not honest i didn't do a length i didn't do it i didn't make the length. i came up early yeah honesty ties in with ego okay it's very tough but uh but you know you, you got to be honest okay so moving over practice there's uh, the saying you heard it you must you might have heard it uh, 10,000 hours to master anything so you've got to do something for 10,000 hours to master something so if you're doing it uh, doing a sport say once uh, once a week for an hour um, that's a 10,000 weeks you're never going to master it uh, an hour a week uh, so 10 10 hours a week uh, 50 weeks a year so that's uh, 500 hours so in 20 years if you're doing it uh, 10 hours a week um you're going to become a master of it okay that's and and it's, it's i'm not going to say it's been proven but it's a nice benchmark to have in the back of your head so uh 10 hours a week for 20 years and you can master something yeah 20 hours a week uh 10 years you can master something that's i think my maths are right I'm going to write I'm fat I'm going to write it down before I go any further. So <laughs> so 50 weeks uh yeah that's right. So it's 500 so uh, yeah no nah, I was right. Yeah. And uh, and this is an, an, a nice concept to have. And as we were saying yesterday with free diving, free diving isn't as simple as people think it is. There's a lot involved in in free diving depending on which particular um, branch of it you're heading towards so a long breath hold doesn't make you a good free diver and if you've been diving for a year and you're like yeah I'm, I can do this I can do that yeah you, if you've been practicing for 10 hours 20 hours a week two years in yeah you're you're about uh, about blue belt about about a quarter of the way there okay um okay so achievability now this kind of ties in i've just said blue belt two out two years of training uh training 10 hours a, or 20 hours a week and uh and two years it's unlikely that if you're 
you're going to, you know, if you take a group of people, that that's that's going to be achievable. Twenty hours a week. So it's unlikely that people are going to want to invest uh, that amount of time for ten years to master something. I mean, they do. Uh, for instance, you know, jujitsu. It's it's minimum ten years. Uh, usually minimum 10 years to get a black belt to, to kind of you know get there and there's thousands of people who do it but it's a long long road so you've got to be aware of what your you know goals are and make sure they are achievable okay make sure they're a challenge but they are achievable and the long-term goals that they're achievable okay otherwise you're going to kind of just lose motivation and so uh, generally, we have uh, in the no tanks to go from yellow to blue is generally two years. If you work hard and you, you really put some time in, you can do it in a year. But generally, it's it's two years. That's your kind of your kind of uh, times time scale. Sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter. Uh, but that's that's kind of where you know we feel we've done a hundred sessions, and um, you know you know kind of what's going on. And we feel that's achievable. If somebody's been in the club for a year, they're kind of hungry for that blue. They're they're kind of well, you know, I'm, I'm moving up in the lanes now. I know kind of what's going on. I want to take some sessions. You know, that's that's you know, two years. Yeah. But equally well in your in your exercises, don't say right tonight. I'm going to hold my breath for eight minutes. Okay, hold my breath for fifteen seconds longer than yesterday, or the same as I did yesterday, or you know. Uh, do something same as I did yesterday, but make sure it's a lot more uh, controlled. You know, okay, I can do that. That's achievable. Now, I've mentioned feedback earlier. When you fail, that's where the feedback is. So feedback goes straight with uh, failure. Okay, so you want to challenge yourself, but it's got to be achievable. But you've got to fail a lot so that you can uh, feedback. Feedback is hundred percent honest. Okay, it's pointless if your feedback isn't honest, and uh, you've got, yeah, you you've got to got to write this write the stuff down, write that feedback down. Okay. The example I always give is the golf. You know, uh, if you just play around a golf, you learn nothing. You've hit the ball, you know, a uh, hundred times, but every time you've hit it, you've been in a different position. The way to learn is to play the first shot ten times, because nine of them will be. You know, wrong or feedbacking not wrong feedbacking hit the first one okay went a bit to the left hit another one went a bit to the right hit another one hit another one hit another one and then when you've hit that ball 10 times from that spot you've had nine feedbacks which is where you can learn from internalization okay so this is uh, we call it uh, no we don't call it but relaxation is uh, internalization is fundamental to uh, relaxation where your skills are so internalized that you can do them without thinking about them the brain then can can switch off okay. this isn't to be confused with uh, just be, doing stuff on autopilot because you've got to break those habits okay so but you've got to have those skills internalized so you know how to do a duck dive so well it's their duck dive you may need to work on it, and you may need to improve it, and you may need to break it and rebuild it. But if you go diving next week, duck dive done, uh, power strokes done, equalization done. It's just, just there. It's done. You've internalized it. You can uh, you can be doing something else um, while doing it. So you duck diving down, maybe looking at somebody else to change direction, change angle. Duck dive's done internalized you're all auto, on autopilot while you're doing something else okay. and uh just happens to be uh last but definitely not least is luck so luck is massive massive influencer on everything we do the fact that you you're able to watch this video is lucky okay the fact that you found it, the fact you knew it was on, the fact that you got a computer that works, the fact that you're in the you know the right country uh, that has a computer, you know, um, you've got to acknowledge the luck that's got you to places, the luck that you answered the phone call when that person offered you that dive. Uh, but 
never um, never kind of credit luck too much all right your hard work gets you there all right um, you got to work hard to, to learn this sort of stuff and you got to have luck okay hand in hand um, and so acknowledge it be aware of it be thankful of it um, awareness acknowledgement adaptive <laughs> yeah be aware of the, the the luck that's got you there acknowledge it you know tip your hat to it um because then you can start being uh, humble a little bit and you can help other people so if you're just like setting records i want to set a record i want to set a record yeah oh wow there's a, you know uh, another record set and then i'm doing this i'm doing that well hang on a sec who who was judging that record who set that up who booked the pool Oh, these are other people doing stuff for me. Well, that's a bit lucky that I was living in the pool. It's a bit lucky that I had this guy to do that. I had, a, oh yeah, actually, maybe, and then you can start feeding, uh, kind of giving back. Okay, if you're aware of the luck that you've had. Okay, but don't kind of just go. Yeah, it's lucky, and that was it was a lot of hard work. Um, it's funny. The more I train, the luckier I get. Is a classic. Classic, I don't know, saying from somebody, from somebody famous. The more I work, the luckier I get. Yeah, because you've got to make, you've got to make opportunities. Right? So if somebody rings you up and says, "Hey, do you want to go diving?" Yes, I do. Else you're going to miss that ice dive. Oh, sorry, Ian. One day, one day we'll do the ice dive. Um. And that's it. So these 10 points, they you can uh, take these. I've put them up there for long enough now. Um, please write them down. Start drawing arrows between them. Think about them. Integrate them into your learning. And it doesn't matter whether it's free diving or chess. Okay, Or it doesn't matter. If you want to progress, they have to be in there. You have to be honest about your motivation. Try and uh, control the ego challenge yourself fail a lot enjoy the failure i see the positives in the failure which is the feedback you know it's it's all in there it's all in there whatever you want to do whatever you want to learn if you're going to progress you need all of those 10 elements okay um in the long term in the long term obviously you can just pick up a uh, you know kind of something and try it out and just give it a go yeah. Um, but ultimately, if you're going to learn something properly, you need those 10 elements. So, um, oh, uh, just have a quick look at some of the things. Herod, Herod the sailing, the master failed more often than the beginner has ever tried. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Oliver. Absolutely you know, spot on. Being motivated to hold your breath for five minutes based only on your want to tell your friends you can hold your breath for five minutes is dishonest motivation. Yep, motivation to improve your dive using feedback from previous dives and understanding it's okay to fail provided you learn from the failure is honest motivation. Man, man, you are good. You should uh, you should teach this. Oh yeah, you do teach this stuff. Um, so thanks, Julian. Uh, yeah okay so um, yeah so um, I think that's it really I just wanted to cover those 10 points and really um, yeah just just kind of give you an overview of them so next week we're not there on Monday it's a bank holiday here in the UK um, and we won't be going diving why I oughta really want to go diving um so we'll be back on tuesday tuesday will be a q a session so uh please write down your questions and um uh, you know kind of uh, wing them over if you want if you have a great question and you think oh, i'm going to forget it by by tuesday then uh, message me and and i'll kind of read out a couple of them um uh, if they're good questions and you don't get to ask them on tuesday have a fantastic weekend. Um, 
keep training, keep happy, and we will see you on uh, on Tuesday, Tuesday night, at seven thirty. Good to see you guys out there again. Um, yeah. Woo. Um, uh, yeah. So I'll see you Tuesday for Q and A. Any questions you've got? It'll be great to hear from you. Okay. Lovely. Okay. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.